Welcome to our latest position analysis and we're having a look at the attacking midfielder playing in that number 10 role. Attacking midfielders are vital to the team, linking the midfield and the attack. Also able to play in a number of different formations, whether that be in a 4-2-3-1 or similar in a 3-5-2 situation. But the main role and the main aim is to be that link between the attack and the midfield. The attacking midfielder has the role of linking the midfield and the attack and their job is to try and find space. And in a congested area of the pitch, they want to try and work in between the lines of the defence as we have here and then the midfield, trying to find the pockets of space that allow that attacking midfielder to get on the ball and then positively affect the game. Attacking midfielders want to create a link between themselves and their striker, working closely with them while also being a good option for the midfield to play the ball forward into. An attacking midfielder that doesn't create angles or space to receive the ball can cause problems for the midfield, reducing their opportunity to play the ball forwards and force them to make that sideways pass. And the sideways passing then gives the defence the opportunity to squeeze up the pitch pressing strongly and making it much harder for the team to create space and keep possession of the ball. So a good number 10 or attacking midfielder needs to find those pockets of space because movement is the key. The first thought for the attacking midfielder should be to find pockets of space away from the defensive midfielder who inevitably will be marking them and trying to get them out of the game. By doing this, this can also create options to play the ball forwards into their striker or out wide to the wingers but good attacking midfielders can find the position where they can link up with one or two other potential players and they can do this by having good movement finding those pockets of space moving into this space gives the midfielder the opportunity to play the ball forwards and the attacking midfielder can now get on the ball and hopefully get in a position to face the goal if they do that they're going to cause lots of problems and to do so we need to make sure we can practice and develop the ability to receive the ball on the half turn. And you can practice receiving the ball on the back foot quite simply. Start off with a driven pass against a wall and then what you want to do is check your shoulder. Be aware of what is around you. Once you've done that, you're going to try and receive the ball on the back foot, allowing you to turn and then face the opposite direction. The more that you can practice this, the more that you can improve your checking and your scanning and then the technique of turning on the back foot nice and quickly, the better you'll be when you get into these situations in between the lines. And then once you do do that, we can then look up and we have a great range of vision. We can see that our strike is ahead and we could potentially play that ball directly through to them or even look at our wide players, seeing their movement off the ball, playing it in between the fullbacks or potentially even switching play across to the other winger. But getting on the half turn allows you to see options ahead of you, which gives you a chance to drive forwards and be a goal scoring threat. Players like Kevin De Bruyne, Phil Foden and Bruno Fernandes are all exceptional at finding space, receiving on the half turn and facing the opposition's goal, which gives them more chances to create goal scoring situations. So if we take a look at five of the top attacking midfielders in the Premier League this season, we can see how influential they've been. Mason Mount has scored four goals and assisted three, with James Madison scoring eight goals and assisting five. And the third place of these five players is Kevin De Bruyne. He's assisted a huge 10 goals this season while scoring three himself. Villa's Jack Grealish has got six goals and 10 assists and Bruno Fernandes, the Man United star player, has got 15 goals and 10 assists this season. And we can see from the, these goal and assist tallies that the, these players can create the space to get on the ball, which allows them to execute the pass to set up their teammates. But what about their movement off the ball? What do they do to get in positions to score more goals? Firstly, one of the key runs for an attacking midfielder is to make runs in behind the centre backs, stretching the play, but also getting in positions to try and score more goals. If, for instance, the winger has the ball, we look at trying to stretch the play and run off the shoulder of the centre back in behind. 
The issue comes if we're always dropping short to the ball. It invites pressure from the defence and sort of makes the attack stagnate because the defence know exactly what's going to happen. So look in behind and run off that shoulder looking for that through ball so that you are clean through on goal. Secondly, it's so important that as an attacking midfielder that you get into the box. Nowadays, attacking midfielders are expected to score lots of goals. It's not just a creative position. So if the ball is out wide with a left or right winger, make sure that you make runs into the box looking at getting the, on, on the end of the crosses. However, if you do hang back, make sure you're ready for that ball to drop on the edge of the area. But the more that you can get into the box, the more goals that any attacking midfielder will score. But there will also be times where you're not behind the play, not running in behind the defence. If the ball gets played into a wide player or a striker, when they're a bit closer to goal, the attacking midfielder can get a lot of joy by overlapping. So as that ball gets played into that wide player, the attacking midfielder can do that overlapping run around the outside of them, potentially then creating a 2v1 situation allowing the ball to be slipped through and a free run on goal. And this can happen with wingers and with centre forwards as well. But the attacking midfielder has to be aware of the space around them, whether there's potential for a 2v1 situation and the opportunity to overlap and get in behind the defence. The modern day attacking midfielder is now required to score and set up plenty of goals during the season. But to do that, it's not all about the technical qualities. It's also about the movement off of the ball. And the more that we can develop the movement off the ball and have better awareness of our surroundings, the more that any attacking midfielder will score. So make sure you're aware, you move, and then you execute with your technical quality.